Progressive Podiatry Project, here to share knowledge, insights and information for you to improve your clinical practice and most importantly, help you help your clients. Welcome everyone, Talisha from the Progressive Podiatry Project here and today we're joined by New Balance Superstar Tech Rep, Matty Spicer. So welcome Matt, how are you doing? I'm good Talisha, how are you? I am good, I am cold but good. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Excellent. So it's great to catch up again. Like it's been a little minute since we caught up last time and always appreciate you joining us here on P3 and very excited about this tech talk because New Balance this season, there's quite a few interesting drops and some new models coming out. Yeah. Mm, we are, yeah, we're making some moves at the moment where um, the brand's in a really healthy, exciting position. So yeah, I'm fortunate to be able to talk about it it's yeah uh, yeah there's a f few ones i'm really excited about that we'll get to towards the end um so just for those that probably haven't seen the videos that we've done before and who podiatrists may not be familiar with sort of yourself and just the new balance brand so much can you give us just a little bit of a brief rundown of doesn't have to be the extensive history of New Balance because you guys have been around for quite a while. But mm -hmm. yeah, your experience, um, New Balance in Australia, just paint us a little bit of picture and then we'll dive into some of the foam tech talks. Cool. Well, um, from a brand point of view, uh, we are, what are we, 2022? So we're 116 years old this year. So uh, I know you've recently done a, a series or a video with, uh, with Mizuno. So we're as old as Mizuno are. Uh, we were founded in Boston in the US by an Irish immigrant by the name of William Riley. So the brand, um, yeah, has a long storied history of uh, making good quality products, started off making metatarsal arch orthotics right up until sort of World War II timing when we started making shoes. Um, in 1960, we brought out a shoe called the Traxster, which is probably a big turning point for our brand because that shoe was the first ever to come out in width options. And obviously, uh, like, as you know, um, that's what we're kind of famous for. That's what we pioneered. That's what the industry knows us as. If nobody, if, if a person doesn't know anything about MB, they know that we make wide shoes. And whilst yeah, we, sure. uh, we celebrate that, we make some very good shoes, uh, very good shoes in standard fits too. So, um, and then probably the, the other sort of key thing is that we're still a privately run company. Um, Jim and Ann Davis, who own the company today, first bought it in April 1972. So they've just recently celebrated 50 years of ownership, which is huge for MB. So, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, in the last couple of years, MB has gone on a bit of a tear with really good quality product, lots of hype around the brand through our lifestyle side of things. Uh, and then our category starting to grow too, like baseball in the US, um, basketball, football, cricket, all that kind of stuff too, really helping to cement the brand. And then from a personal point of view, so um, I'm our national technical and field of play category manager. So a bit of a mouthful, but essentially what that means is I look after um, like tech and product training for Australia and New Zealand. So I look after all the retail staff that sell our shoes. I look after medical. I look after the training for MB employees as well. Uh, I manage about 25 athletes across football and running in sports marketing. And then I'm the football and tennis category manager. So I look after all the buying and merch for that. So yeah, a little bit on my plate, but it's fun. No two days are the same. <laughs> Many hats. <laughs> yeah. It's, but you're amazing at what you do, which is why I'm always so excited Thank to you. have you on to chat. Um, so probably the first thing that I wanted to jump into, which is always a really good starting point, and it'll give us something to bounce off, is like everyone talks about midsole foams and the importance of midsole foam and densities, and every brand has their go-to foam like we've got nike with its zoom x and so new balance we've got the fresh foam and the fuel cell would you be able to um give us a little bit of a rundown on well probably what the importance of the midsole is for a shoe and then what the difference is between the new balance fresh foam and the fuel cell foams yeah easy there's um i guess to start um, fresh foam's obviously been around a lot longer than fuel cell. Fuel cell's had a kind of a couple of iterations that um, have kind of got us to where we are with fuel cell. But I think the important thing to start with is like sort of why we use two foams. And, and the key reason for that is to offer the runner or the consumer a point of difference. So if we just have one cushioning system and the runner or the person trying on that pair of shoes didn't like it, then what do they do? They go and buy another brand. They don't buy 
our brand. But also what it means is if I look at like the runners that I look after, because of our multiple types of cushioning and the way we can develop and make foams less dense and more dense and softer and harder and all that kind of stuff, I can offer an athlete a shoe for every piece of their training based on the foams that we use within our shoes. So Fresh Foam has been around since late 2013. It first got introduced in a model called the 980, which was a lovely blue with uh, with orange and yellow midsole. It was <laughs> quite an interesting colorway. But Fresh Foam is a cushioning that we have designed. We, uh, we basically take data from people who are running at all different speeds and different types of runners as well. In our R&D lab in Boston, we have a look at where they're striking, how hard they're striking and how quickly through their gait cycle they're moving. And that's where we get um, the shaping on the midsole. So that data helps to tell us where we need to help the pressure move throughout the midsole and how we're, uh, I guess we're going to do that. Fresh foam is soft, uh, it's smooth, and it's progressive. So the idea is that it's been engineered to run further. So you want the durability out of that, you want the smoothness from the cushioning, you want the connectivity from heel to toe. How it's actually made is if you think of a cookie cutter in the shape of an outsole, what's gonna happen is that we dump a whole heap of um, rubber pellets or EVA pellets into that, um, into that cookie cutter, and then we heat them up. Because the pellets are circular, they don't fit together symmetrically. So air gets captured within them during the heating process, which is where fresh foam gets its smoothness and its softness from. As that heats and liquefies, we take the heat, uh, we turn the heat off and it molds together like candle wax. We then apply the data to the walls of that, um, of that mold. And that's where we get the, the individualized midsole foams. And also depending on how much heat we leave there is we can make the midsole more or less dense, however we choose. Um, when it comes to fuel cell, fuel cell is fast, reactive, and responsive. It's been designed to, it's been engineered to run faster. So most fuel cell styles, uh, when it comes to running specifically, they're not here for a long time, they're here for a good time. And that's, that's essentially like, that's the key phrase I, I personally use with the Rebel, for an example. That shoe is definitely not the most durable. Yeah, no, it's one of your favorites. It's definitely not the most durable shoe on the market. I can confirm that, but you're going to have fun in it every single time you, you hit the ground. So, can attest to that for sure. Yeah, 100%. I'm so glad to you say that. Um, yeah, so with Fuel Cell, that's made from PBAX, which PBAX is a highly responsive rubber that pretty much every brand are using these days. You go on their website and then, like, you go into the brands we work with tab and at least nearly every brand in the industry i guess the way we make it is slightly different so um yeah we use an autoclave machine or something similar to a to a pressure chamber we put in uh, little molds of of p-backs and we inject that with co2 and nitrogen the gas um starts to liquefy and the rubber starts to melt and they merge together depending on how long you leave the heat in there um means how i guess dense the midsole is going to be so the longer you leave the heat the less dense the midsole is because the gas once the heat goes away wants to return to its original state so it blows up the foam and so by doing that you create like a shock absorber within that so think of like shock absorbers in a car or springs on a trampoline you want that bounce effect effect you want it to be able to hit the ground and then propel forward really really quickly so fuel cell you'll find um yeah, in the Rebel, all our Supercomp stuff, which Supercomp is the new name we're giving to our family of carbon shoes. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll share a little bit more on that later. But, yeah, all the Supercomp stuff's got fuel cell. But then you're starting to see as well um, some of our basketball shoes and our tennis shoes have fuel cell in it as well. Because okay. when, yeah, when you make those types of midsoles a little bit firmer, they're actually quite durable, but still also give um, a bit of response back as well. So, yeah, there's... The two cushionings kind of talk well to each other because if you're for example you're training for a marathon and you might be doing sort of 50 60 k's a week maybe your mileage is even more you'd say have a 1080 with fresh foam for your longer stuff so that it's your feet don't have to take a pounding your legs and muscles aren't too sore all that kind of thing you might then get a rebel to do your high intensity stuff at the gym maybe you're doing a circuit or an f45 class or something like that and then you'll have like an rc elite or a super comp trainer for your race day so there's so many different options within that and then you might work on at a job where you're on your feet all day so you might have a pair of 880s because they're super comfortable to to walk in all day so there's so many I guess different options through our brand that can enable um yeah enable comfort but also fit longevity great feeling on the foot so I think we're in a really comfortable position at the moment where 
uh, the gap between our, our best shoe and our worst shoe is very, very small. So, um, yeah, yeah. We're, we're making some good product at the moment, if I do say so myself. Oh, I 100% agree. Like, I think, I reckon when I first started running, the first pair of running shoes I had was a pair of Nike um, Freeze, I think the version three or four. And then when I got more into running, the next pair of shoes I bought was New Balance. And I was just a solid New Balance fangirl from then on. And that probably would have been, oh God, (laughs) a long time ago, about maybe Mm. 2007, 2008. And it's just been amazing seeing, yeah, the transition and the changes and the innovation that's been coming out of New New Balance that entire time. Um, so launching, I reckon probably a good place to start, um, for more so the, we'll go with the plush side of life. So how about we run through a couple of the shoes that are more fresh foam based? Sure. Um, we'll start with, I reckon the three that basically make up, um, like 80% of our sales in this country. So the 1080, the 880 and the 860. So, um, start with the new 1080. So this is the first time um, the three version 12 models all released around March, um, March, end of February. It's the first time ever that we've had the, our three key models all update at the same time. And that was just by coincidence. The 860 was supposed to release in August last year and the 880 and 1080 at the start of this year. But um, due to good old COVID and factory issues and all that kind of stuff, it got delayed. So anyway, yeah. all three are here and we've made some significant updates to all three of them. So uh, your um, uh, your uh, consumer base, I guess, or, or the people um, watching this video will be happy to know um, the ultra heel is no more. So we've removed that really curved heel counter on both the 1080 and the 860. Um, yep. I've got to say, like, it was terrific for people who had any form of Achilles inflammation or um, like a Haglund's or something like that on their rear foot because it reduced the amount of pressure. But if your calcaneus didn't fit perfectly right in the base of the heel, it was it took so long, if at all, for the shoe to mould to your to the shape of your heel. Yeah. It just like. I must say that was us trying to be innovative. It was us trying to do something different that the market hadn't done yet. It was us trying to, yeah, really just try and change things up a little bit because at the moment um, the industry is in a position where footwear, running footwear specifically, every brand is churning out some really great product at the moment. And I've never seen it so competitive like it is now. If you don't try and change things or try and be innovative, you're just going to get left behind. So we acknowledge that that, was something that we changed but probably didn't work uh as amazingly as we thought it would so we've gone back to like i guess what we call a more traditional heel counter where it's got a thermoplastic internal with heaps of memory foam so you're still gonna have the calcaneus the heel bone sitting really deep and and securely right in the rear foot but have enough protection around your achilles so the shoe will mold really well to your heel um yep. Also in the 1080, we've just adapted the toe box ever so slightly. So for those of you who aren't aware, the mesh on our running shoes is called Hyperknit. It's it's three layered. So the internal layer completely heat welded using thermoplastic. So that's going to help to prevent um, rubbing and friction and things like that, hopefully helping to reduce uh, things like blisters. Um, also great for patients that have um, diabetes because they get unknown rubbing on their feet, but with the shoe that's completely heat welded with no exposed seams, that chance of rubbing and friction is greatly reduced. The middle layer has polyester blended to it. So a man-made fiber that's moisture wicking. So with cone shaped fibers, it sucks the moisture up through there to the surface of the shoe where it'll help to evaporate, um, which will help to reduce the amount of odor buildup within the shoe too, because moisture doesn't build up as frequently within the uppers. So means that foot fungal infections are hopefully reduced within our product. Um, And then the top layer has elastic through the top. So if you see how much I can pull that out and then when I let it go, it just comes back into shape. So the beauty with that is that if you've got forefoot imperfections like bunions or hammer toes or anything like that, or you just don't like the constriction of the forefoot, it's going to sit around your foot and not sit down onto your toes too much. Um, The change we've made is that the upper is now, has been extended by five mil, which has created a bit more depth in the forefoot too. So you're going to get greater space there for your toes to more naturally splay when you're toeing off. Um, And then the third thing we've changed um, with the 1080, Fresh Foam has always traditionally had concave shaping, so shapes that point inward on the the lateral side. And then on the medial side, it's always had convex shapes that point outward. The reason being is when you hit the ground, we want the 
the shapes here to absorb the shock and then push it forward. Whereas on the medial side, we wanted them to create a bit more structure um, and aid against compression when you're towing off. However, we noticed through lockdown, a lot of people were wearing this shoe to walk in. Um, we also wanted to make sure that when someone was running in it, they had that bit more structure because of the amount of cushioning that's in this. We understand that sometimes it can get a little bit unstable because proprioception isn't as, um, I guess it isn't as efficient as what it is, say, like you brought up the Nike Free before and something that's a lot closer to the ground. So with this, you can see through the forefoot, we've kind of restructured the midsole in here. So see how it changes from here yeah. being concave into convex through the forefoot. So yep. what that's going to do, particularly for someone who's walking in the shoe, um, it's going to give them greater structure under their um, fifth, four, fifth, fourth and third um MPJ. So we're going to provide greater structure underneath this area of the shoe so that particularly when you're towing off, you'll hopefully be a little more straight uh, and efficient through that motion. Yeah. So facilitating that sort of higher gear propulsion as opposed to mm. the lower gear when you transfer or work off laterally. Yes, a hundred percent. So yeah, we've had some, had some good feedback, particularly from, um, yeah, from the athletes that we're dealing with saying that toward the end of the run too, when they're fatiguing, they feel like yep. their, their toe off pattern is, um, slightly more similar through each step than what it would be if they, in the previous versions to the 1080. Yeah. Very good. Um, next up we have the 1080s, uh, little sibling, the 880. So the 880s, probably the shoe that's had the greatest change within our range for this season. So um, it's our highest selling shoe now in Australia. And, and um, yeah, it's definitely in top two in the US. I'm just can't remember off the top of my head whether it's 860 or 880 that's number one over there. But this shoe has undergone a huge change. And I'm for, loving it. Uh, good. <laughs> it's kind of been changed for the runner, uh, which is exciting. But there's also some features within this that have been changed for the person who's using it day to day as well and might not necessarily be running in it all the time. It's the number one referred shoe by pods in this country, which, um, yeah, is huge respect to the shoe. And, and a lot of that has been based on fit and function. So from an orthotics point of view, it's our deepest fit, particularly through the midfoot um, and the forefoot. But it's got a really broad base at the heel so you can put pretty much i'll get my laces out of the way there you can pretty much put any type of device into the shoe at the base there as well be it a heel lift um uh, any type of orthotic i've even seen in the 4e men's version someone being able to get an afo into it so uh it can handle all of that um but the main changes are firstly from the outsole so this outsole is five mil wider than the previous one through the whole shoe on on through the heel the midfoot and the forefoot so we now have greater surface area you can see as well the shoe's quite straight lasted so even for someone whose feet are a little more flexible maybe they pronate uh, a little bit more than uh, than sort of a more neutral foot type you're still going to be able to get them into the shoe quite comfortably because with the amount of surface area here friction is created quite quickly as the shoe hits the ground which is going to slow down the foot um, but the big change as you can see in the differentiation in the color in the midsoles is that it's no longer just a single piece of fresh foam which it has been uh, for the past few generations this is the first shoe in our range that crosses over so we've got fresh foam in the heel which you can see called out there but then this white foam in the forefoot is fuel cell so first ever shoe that crosses over both um the important thing here is we went through uh, a good 18 months of testing to see how fresh foam and fuel cell work together uh and the conclusion we came to was not just to add like has done like back in the day when we used to have rev light with little pods of cushioning we thought that would mean that that area would either compress or not compress quicker than the other areas and the shoe around it would compress faster. So we needed to make sure that we were putting in a, a sizable chunk of fuel cell. So you can see that the fuel cell actually, and you can see it's white in here too, and where it comes through on the sides. So you've actually got a full length pod of fuel cell through the forefoot and a full, and a, sorry, a half length fuel cell in the forefoot and a half length fresh foam in the forefoot. But you can see that they cross over each other. So you get that great connectivity between the midsole. The reason for that is to give the 880 a bit of pop. Now, the mid price pointed neutral market, so I'm talking between sort of 180 to 220 is you know, in terms of Australian retail dollars, 
is insanely convoluted. There's so much good product within that spot. It's probably the, yeah. the arguably the sweet spot of running Pegasus, at the minute. Pegasus, the Ghost, Cumulus. Yeah, Wave Rider. Um, yeah, there's so many, there's so many options within that space. Um, and so we needed to do something different in the 880 that would enhance the shoe. And so by adding a more uh, kind of poppy feeling to the forefoot, you're going to get better propulsion out of the shoe, but the feeling on the foot's going to be uh, enhanced as well. We're still going to get the structure from the midsole that you know and love that helps to protect your patient's foot, that helps to give the structure when there's a device in the shoe, but you're just going to get uh, a better experience out of the forefoot now as well. So, um, yeah, so far the 880's got a, a much more enhanced first feel as well, because I know pods don't love it when I say this, but it is important to us that the shoe feels good as soon as the person puts it on their foot in store. Well, that's sales, isn't it? It is. It's Unfortunately, that's how it goes. If a, a person is just buying a new pair of running shoes and maybe they only buy one pair every two years or something like that, if it doesn't feel good in the store, they can't think about or envisage how it's going to feel in a month's time once they've used yeah, it exactly. quite a bit. That's not possible to them. So if it doesn't feel comfortable immediately, we lose. And so we've done that with the 880, but I feel like we've got a nice balance now with how the shoe's going to perform in the long run too. Yeah, and I must say, because I've um, racked up a few Ks in this version of the 880, and it is, yeah, very different to the logo, because I think it's been about three or four years since my last pair of 880s. And yeah, with that blending of the fresh foam and the fuel cell, like it is, it does make it an even more versatile shoe, I find. So it's very much and like what you were saying, how it's one of the most well, highest selling ones and most common ones podiatrists put people in is because I personally find that it does cover so many bases and it's for people um, that probably aren't as well versed in footwear recommendations. It's oftentimes like if in doubt go the 880 because it is got that sort of broad range of versatility. And yeah, with this foam, I find that, yeah, it's comfortable for sort of my longer mileage steady state runs. But then if I do feel like throwing in a few surges, you do get that responsiveness from the forefoot, that pop that you were talking about. So yeah, I'm very pumped about this one. I think it's yeah a great iteration of the 880. It's, it's important to us that I guess we create shoes that the runner loves, but it's also important to us that the, the walker, the gym goer, the everyday user enjoys these shoes as well. And like to kind of like enhance the point you just made there, if, um, a clinician only has room in their brain for one shoe per brand. This is the shoe you remember from New Balance because this, um, like my 87 year old grandfather shuffles a K around the block each morning in his 880s. Um, my wife goes to the gym a couple of times a week in her 880s. I chase the kids at the park and run a couple of times a week and walk a couple of times a week in my 880s. My mate owns a bar and so he he works in his 880s. And then I've got a couple of my athletes who are doing 120, 130 Ks a week who are wearing the 880s. So the shoe, to your point, is just that versatile that you can do so many different types of activities in them. And, and plus now, because of the way that the 880's grown and, and the sales that we're putting behind this shoe, we're doing about 10 colorways this year. So there's so many different options where the, the one we're waiting on is the triple black. It keeps getting delayed. So that will be here very, very yeah. soon. Um, but also um, for the viewers to remember, uh, we do multiple fits in this too. So we do a standard D for men's and then a 2A and a 4A. So standard wide and wider. And then in women's, we offer a B standard and then D and 2A. And we're looking at offering a, a, a 2A fit in women's as well. So an extra narrow one. So we'll have, oh, very good. We'll have four fits in women's. Yeah. So watch out for that. Um, and then next up, T, um, the third of this family is the 860. So interestingly, with the way that medially supportive shoes have kind of changed within our industry, people are looking at how medial posts can, uh, I guess, affect the foot and how that changes and all that kind of stuff. We've gone from 15 years ago when I started at Athlete's Foot having 80% of the shoes on the wall with some form of medial posting. Like we That's now have... Evil. Yeah, well, you kind of got told that if someone's foot rolled in, you gave them a medial post, right? Yeah. So. Now, I think we're all much more aware of the role that medial posting and dual Thank density you. posts can play. Yep. Um, and so we've got, uh, yeah, the Vongo, the 860, uh, 
the Vega and the Prism. So we've got four shoes that have medial posting in our entire range now. Um, the 860 medial post sits just in here. You can see where it's cut out. This is called a post applied medial post. And what that means is the midsole gets made in one piece. We then cut out where we want the post to go and the more dense rubber gets applied into there. So the if ever you, you pick up an 880, have a squish of the midsole down here and then of the medial post and you'll notice the difference in density. The medial post um, is on a 33 degree angle and it comes halfway into the shoe so that when the foot hits the ground, the idea is that the foot will pick up the post where it needs it and rolls over the top of it. So we're trying to make the movement and the motion as efficient as possible. We're not trying to stop pronation. We're trying to in, in make, the motion, make the motion efficient. And so where the 860 for me plays a great role within podiatry is for that patient who potentially hasn't had a great pair of shoes before, maybe they're getting some biomechanical issues, uh, maybe they're getting some pain through the lower limb and then trying them in a good pair of running shoes to begin with might be a part of their rehab program or their treatment program. And so having that support uh, might help them, but orthotics, might be in their future let's say but you want to try them in good pair of shoes first that might be where that could work but yeah the 860 is our second highest selling shoe in this country still so we're still churning out thousands and thousands of units of this across multiple colors same as the 880 we're doing three fits in both uh, men's and women's with this it's got a traditional eva midsole but then you can see it's got a layer of fresh foam yep. um i'm really excited to uh, i don't have the sample with me but to give you guys a bit of a, a sneak peek vocally um, the 860 V13 is landing in the middle of November. So the V12 will have only sort of been on the market for eight or nine months, but just due, due to circumstance, the V13 is coming out. We're going to a full fresh foam midsole in the 860 with the same premise though. So it'll have a cutout medial yep. post still, post apply medial post, just with more dense yeah, fresh wow. foam, which would be cool. And then where it's fresh foam in this version, we're going to have a fuel cell top bed. So the 860 is getting the fuel cell treatment too, which is really exciting. So yeah, that's um, cool. I like yeah. that. And so you can see as well with the 860, like I said, but the 1080 has that more traditional heel counter and we've um, premiumed the upper, let's say. So uh, yeah, much more premium version of Hyperknit now in the 860. So um, yeah, um, think of... Sorry, is it still, sorry to interrupt, is it still no, sitting fine. on a um, 10 mil offset? Yeah, both that and the 880 are on 10 mil and the yep. 1080 is on 8 mil. 8 mil, yeah. Yeah. And so the 860, like brand equivalency, that's kind of up there with like our Brooks Adrenaline, um, the Saucony Glide, that sort of Yeah, thing. Um, Asics GT2000, yep. um, Wave Inspire from Mizuno, that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's the, that's the 860 in a nutshell. So between those three shoes, the fits we do, the colours we do, um, yeah, that's like 80% of our running sales in this country. Yeah, so I'm keen as for um, the November drop. That's, uh, I'm yeah. going to be really interested to see how that goes. It feels good. I've squished my size 11 into the into the nine and a half men's sample and they, <laughs> the cushioning feels good. Couldn't really walk though. My toes didn't function properly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just because we were just talking about the 860 and it's got the medial cutout, um, probably a good segue. I don't know if this is where you're heading. Um because there's a slight difference between the 860s midsole construction and the Vongo. Yeah, there is. Um, and yes, it was where I was heading. It's almost like we'd planned this, Talisha. Like, I yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Vongo. So Vongo has got a really kind of like interesting place within our range. It was kind of, uh, for those of you who, who saw the Vongo a few iterations ago, it started off life. We needed a like a dual density fresh foam shoe. But didn't fully, like, I guess, understand how to build one. Oh, not That's probably not true. We, we just didn't know how to make it effective and how to make the fresh foam work with a dual density kind of aspect to it. And so it had a full like dual density thing down the side. Again, we were trying to do something different. It worked really well when you got tired. But if you spent a lot of time laterally, the shoe just ended up like that. There was no chance of you getting back medially. And so the shoe didn't wear all that well. Um, however, with this, um, there's been a really kind of terrific adjustment made to the medial post. So you can see the medial post in here, it's all marbled and see where it sits, but it's not a post applied one like the 860. So what we've done here, I go back to that cookie cutter analogy I used before when I was talking about fresh foam in general. With yep. this, same thing, think of the cookie cutter, but through here, 
through this section of the shoe here, we put a divider. And then when we're when we're dumping the, the pallets in, the softer pallets go in the majority of the midsole and the firmer pallets go on where we want the medial post. As that liquefies, we take the post out and the, the pallets merge together. So you get an inherent smoothness between the post and the rest of the shoe. And so the idea is that the shoe, as you start to fatigue and start to pronate more, um, the, the shoe is going to support you where you need it. So it very much is, I would rather put this in the guidance category than in a stability category. It's something yeah. that probably more equally sits up alongside, I guess, like what the Kayano is trying to achieve. The Kayano is not a massively medially stable shoe, but it does have the post there for when you need it, which is what the Vongo is doing. Um, yeah, it's got the same kind of build as the 1080. You can see from the upper construction uh, and the heel counter there as well. I wish there wasn't a black in oh, sorry, a navy insole on the inside because you could actually see that, but it's really nicely padded in and around the top of the ankle with memory foam. And then you've got the fully um, knitted upper. You can see how far I can pull that up and then let it go and it comes back into shape beautifully. So we do two yep. fits in this. We do B and D in women's and D and 2E in men's. Um, but the Vongo V6 will be coming out middle of next year. We're looking at a sort of a June, July uh, 2023 release and the midsole is getting completely revitalized. Um, I can't share too much information on it, but it's going to be something that we haven't quite seen in stability shoes yet. So yeah, our R&D team, team in Boston is doing some good things at the moment. So um, yeah, yeah nice. we'll wait to see that. Very keen. It's... Um... Yeah, I must say, like the Vongo, when it dropped, it was kind of a bit of an unsung hero, I, I feel, with, um, yeah, some of the people that wanted the lighter weight, a bit more support, and it just, yeah, like a bit more than what the 1080 offered. Yeah, so correct. So I feel that it's a good show. And I don't know about you, are you finding that more podiatrists, are, like it's getting a little bit more traction in the podiatry space? Yeah, well, I think like, like I've been doing this a long time, right? Like I've been at MB for nine years and I've been dealing with podiatry that whole time. And for me, it's, um, it's almost like the squeaky wheel gets the oil in terms of that. I just keep talking about it and keep educating and keep saying, hey, don't forget we've got this. Um, and that's kind of helping to get pods to understand. And, and that simply comes from the fact like you guys are busy, right? Like you deal with so many patients with so many different issues that your brain only has a certain amount of space to remember. And so um, if I can be that voice that constantly goes, hey, don't forget, we've got this shoe. This shoe might be perfect for patient X. And like you might only see that type of patient once in a blue moon, but all of a sudden you're like, hey, the MB Vongo, like that shoe could actually work for you. So we're finding, um, yeah, I'm finding that people are starting to to find a place for it in their referral rotation. But um, yeah, it's a really kind of different concept that can help alleviate some issues for your patient, for sure. Yeah, nice. And yeah, keen to see what happens next year, for sure. Mm, it's exciting. So next up would probably be heading into the fresh foam more range. Yeah. So going, um, going maximalist. So yeah, for those, those paying attention, we've had, we've kind of dabbled our, our feet in the water that is the maximalist category. Uh, and unlike kind of the minimalist category, which kind of, I think we can all agree at the time was a bit of a fad and didn't really hang around. Although like some of the principles did, like we learned that it was a good idea to increase proprioception and we learned it was a good idea to increase um, muscle activation. But I don't think it had the legs kind of pardon the pun that, that maximalism <laughs> does. And maybe that's because maximalism protects our legs a little bit more, but um, yeah. So there's obviously a brand that we all know within the maximalist space that's that's been doing really well and has told the industry that maximalism is good. Uh, there are sales to be had, so we've made some styles within that space too. However, I wonder what brand that is. <laughs> <laughs> up until um, a point, we've been very equally compared with them from what we've been creating. But the next version of the more, which is version four, so very easy to roll off the tongue, the more V four. Um, that's going to come out uh, in, over the next few weeks and is taking us in a direction that's New Balance's direction. It's not what the other brand are doing. So this is the more V4 and it is a chunky, chunky boy. So this is kind of, think if the 1080 just took some steroids 
that's and it would turn <laughs> into it would turn into the more v4 this spend has spent every day in the gym for the last 10 years um yeah, it's pumping a itself boy. up but yeah so in comparison to the 1080 which has a 32 mil heel and a 24 mil forefoot this has a 35 mil heel and a 30 mil forefoot so you've got a five mil drop. It looks higher in the heel. The heel actually of your foot actually sits down about yeah, here. Yeah, the heel can is encapsulated. Well, the midsole is encapsulated. So it wraps up um, around the back of the ankle and sits in and around the calcaneus. So if I give you a top down look, you can see that it's, it's quite broad through the midfoot particularly and then tapers to a point at the toe box. Um, and then from the outsole, look how much coverage you've got on the outside there so with really nice flex grooves as well you're going to get nice spring there's still um, a bit of firmness through the midfoot here not quite as much as the v3 i must emphasize that because a lot of pods were referring to v3 because of its strict rigidity in the forefoot so yep. really helping to to lock up um lock up the toes helping to like with things like forefoot pathology i still think this will benefit that but it's not quite as rigid in the forefoot the more has been the more v4 has been designed to really give the user just such a comfortable feel underfoot so yeah. you can see with that much cushioning um, and the way that the the shaping works you're really going to get a plush connective feel through the whole shoe there's the, the lateral side uh, sorry the medial side for you as well so a very clean looking shoe um, a very plush looking shoe it's going to absorb pretty much anything you can throw at it as well um, underfoot and we do it in we're doing multiple fits in a couple of colors in the more v4 as yeah. well so probably uh, for those playing along at home um, that brand i was referencing earlier was obviously hoka um, and this probably most equally competes with the bondi yeah, I'd probably sit it alongside that. But the more V4 is kind of in its own space. It's not going to feel like Hocker. We've decided that we really want to beat our own drum here and do our own thing. So, um, yeah, which I think is exciting. It's going to have a slightly softer feel underfoot. Um, but, yeah, it's going to feel amazing. Just the only thing I'd kind of be wary of, um, particularly with those who haven't worked with these types of shoes before, just be aware of how your patient moves in them. Um, because of so much cushioning, proprioception is really difficult to attain with the ground and so uh, if your patient's really unstable this might not be the best option for them something like a 1080 might be better because there's more connectivity but um yeah, yeah for some point. yeah for someone who needs a lot of cushioning and and wants that plushness that's where the more v4 can fill a void and i was just noticing with the um lateral midsole that it's got what you're saying um with the was it the 880 the 1080 through here uh, yeah sorry 1080 yep. yeah so just for that more stable forefoot propulsion yep absolutely yeah we wanted to create a bit more structure sorry i didn't mention that we wanted to create a bit more structure um through the forefoot flex grooves as well and by having that um be a bit more i guess um structured in that area you're going to provide a more efficient toe off yep um and then kind of flowing on from that we do a trail version of it as well so uh, we used to make the trail and the road kind of exactly the same and then just whack a trail outsole on this, but we've kind of made the, the trail more uh, its own beast. So it's got a slightly more structured midsole um, with a Vibram outsole. So uh, full, yeah, full Vibram grip on the outsole there. And if I can get it close enough, there we go. You can see how deep yeah, the lugs are. decent lugs. If the camera wants to focus, but there we yeah, go. Now that yeah, you're focused, you're pretty good. Cool. Um, the major difference uh from an upper point of view is that it has a thermoplastic weave through the top so if you're going to go trudging through some wet grass or get caught in a light shower uh you'll be fine we haven't done a gore-tex upper on this because we want the water to escape we don't want gore-tex is great because it keeps your feet dry to a point but if water gets in your shoe or you sweat yeah, a lot it doesn't out. get out yeah so whatever keeps water out also gets water in so um that's why we didn't do that but um, keep an eye out for uh, February, March next year when the More Trail V3 comes out. It's been uh, nicknamed the Waste Monster uh, because, like I should have mentioned this before, the, ten, the 1080 and the Hiero V7 that I'm just about to show you both meet our Greenleaf standard. What that means is that 50% of the upper has been made from recycled or ethically sourced materials. So uh, we're really, yeah, we're really trying hard to, to make sustainable shoes. And so the more V4, uh, more, sorry, more trail V3 has been nicknamed the waste monster because it's, we've used more waste creating the shoe than the shoe is actually going to create itself. So all like all the detailing, like 
like the New Balance logo, um, the eyelets, the um, the aglets on the end of the laces, the the detailing on the end logos and around the heels all been made from recycled plastic bottles. So it's all kind of shimmery and sparkly. Um, and it'll have like a two-tone midsole with a softer midsole down the bottom so it can like glide over the trails and you're not feeling any of the, the rocks and the sticks and stuff underneath, which is going to be, yep. yeah, going to be amazing. So keep an eye out for that next year. Very good. And then that flows us into the hero. Um, I'm keen as to get these on my feet. I wish I could, I wish through the camera, I could somehow throw it to you and you could just catch it because the weight reduction on this is just crazy. Um, I believe it was ASICS who did a study recently about uh, a consumer or runner's um, ability to notice when a shoe's lost weight. The, the feedback came back um, was that the, the amount of weight that a shoe needed to lose for someone to actually notice that from the previous version was 20 grams, uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're dealing with shoes that weigh only 250 grams, when you lose 20, it can be significant. The Hiero V7 from V6 has lost 40 on average. Yeah, so wow. there's a huge weight reduction in this. And before I, I can already hear the people screaming at me, less weight equals less stability. Just hold your hat for a second. Pretty much all the weight reduction <laughs> within this um, has come from the outsole. So V6 had an outsole which was really straight and really wide, but all of the lugs were super close together and really thick. If you ran over some mud or a muddy trail, the mud quite often got caught on, in the lugs and turned into a road shoe. So with this, we've restructured the outsole. You can see the, the, the way that the shaping uh, is differentiated between the heel and the forefoot, but then also you've yep. now got this identifiable perimeter on the outsole of lugs so that when you're running on an uneven surface, which a trail normally is, you're gonna get more inherent grip both laterally and medially. And then the lugs in the heel face forward to give you better grip going downhill. And then the lugs in the forefoot face um, to uh, face backward to give you better grip going uphill. So um, yeah, we're really considering how the shoes um, going to function on the ground. Um, but then also I'm pretty happy to tell you it's got the same midsole that the 1080 uses and then the same similar upper to the 880. So you're getting fit and function that you know and love from our running range that's trusted and, tr and true in a trail shoe that's really starting to make some noise. So we do this really, um, really nice trail colorway. We've also just dropped a charcoal with a gum colored outsole. And then there's also a Gore-Tex one coming. Oh, this version of the Hiero is amazing. It's a dream yeah. machine of a trail shoe. And I should mention the flare on the back because everyone always always picks it up and has a look at it. So just FYI, it does nothing. So but it's it looks simply, pretty. Well, it's there for that reason, right? It's there. The um, We have a design studio, a lifestyle design studio in Tokyo. Um, and the team there got a hold of the hero and want to sell it as a lifestyle shoe. So in Korea, Japan, and China particularly, uh, trail is becoming very big from a lifestyle point of view. And so they put that flare on the back so that when this is sitting on the shoe wall, you notice all the shoes around it. And then all of a sudden you go, hey, that flare on the back of that shoe is weird. And your journey from not knowing about this to trying it on, to finding it comfortable, to purchasing it is very rapid. Uh, so I like to tell people that it helps actually with braking when you're going downhill. It'll help to give you a bit of extra. <laughs> what it actually does is flick a lot of mud up onto the back of your legs. Yeah, but <laughs> it's uh, it's in saying that it's an insanely comfortable shoe. So we're really, yeah, we're really thrilled with how this has come out, how it's, um, yeah, meets our green leaf standard, as I mentioned. So it's got 50% of the upper made from recycled materials. So we're starting to, uh, we're not focused on like one silo of our footwear range, being sustainable we were trying to make the whole thing hit a certain level so the 1080 um the hero and the whole 574 family in lifestyle they all meet the green leaf standard this season the 860 and the 880 v13s will join it the more uh, v4 uh the more trail v3 so by the end of this decade we want to have all of our running range hit 50 percent and then the goal is by 2020, uh, by 2040 to have a hundred percent of our shoes. Um, yeah. Meeting Unreal. completely recycled and, and sustainable. So um, yeah, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing because like five years ago, we probably would have high fived to each other and gone, look at how good we are as running brands. We're all being sustainable. We're really, that's what the consumer expects now. And I think that's what we expect from ourselves, right. To look after the planet. So um, just the tough thing at the moment um, 
obviously is the is the midsole so trying to yeah. reuse foams that have had a life and have been compressed is really difficult so we are working on that we just don't i haven't heard any answers just yet but wait, yeah. watch this space well, that's a really good wrap up of the fresh foam range. So now that we've covered off that, there's a couple of shoes that I very much fangirl from the fuel cell range. So are we able to do a little bit of an unpack from fuel cell love? Yeah, of course. Um, we've had, I've got one to, right down here. Um, so the Rebel V2, when this dropped um, at the sort of middle of last year, um, yeah, kind of hit the market with a flurry. There was nothing like this on the market. And and Talisha, you know from firsthand experience just how plush and soft this midsole is. I don't know if you can, if you guys can see how much I can actually push my fingers into the midsole there. But this is the the lowest density midsole we make, but it's the highest response. So it's the most fun. You're going to hit the ground and propel forward really nicely. But what we need to do is make the next shoe somehow better right we need to improve on what we've done here and the main goal uh, from the product team was to get 15 percent more people into the rebel v3 than have been in v2 so we need to make it a little bit more accessible so here is v3 it was supposed to come out in march but it's been pushed back to september uh start of october so i know it I do, makes me sad yeah i do apologize but we <laughs> we want to deliver the best product we can so making sure we got all the materials to do so so the midsole density is the same still a, a 35 durometer so super super low density um but what we have done is the midsole heights uh, the stack heights at the heel and at the forefoot have been raised by 1.5 to 2 mil. So you're going to get a little bit more cushioning throughout the entirety of the shoe. And then if I show you the outsoles, the midfoot um, area has been narrowed ever so slightly. And this isn't a fair comparison because this is a nine and a half and this is an 11. But the forefoot, particularly through this space here, has been widened. So you're getting a better landing and push off area in the forefoot and reduction of weight through the heel where we don't need it. So because the um, because the Rebel is a six mil drop and it's quite a low profile shoe, we're almost encouraging midfoot um, strike within this shoe because we want the shoe to hit the ground and propel forward like that. Fuel cell shoes, uh, particularly non-plated ones, aren't really uh, designed to be completely for rear foot heel strikers they'll naturally push the foot forward a little bit because of the low drop too um and then we've deepened the midfoot fit too so you've got a bit more space um through this area so we're going to have uh, a couple of colors drop we've got a black one coming as well which has been called out for uh within the rebel range and then we've also got uh, a range of rebels and 1080s coming uh which is going to be a little pack called permafrost which it's going to have like a hydrohesion water repellent upper it's got elastic laces it's going to be triple white with gold detailing on it as well so Ooh. it looks looks very very fast so um yeah keep an eye out for that but yeah rebel v3 is going to be a really really fun shoe I'm so keen and it's I very much find that it's like what you were saying about how it encourages more that midfoot striking so I find it's probably my favorite shoe to do my speed work sessions in like if I'm doing mm -hmm. mile repeats anything that you've got to be fast and on your feet and doing speed work yeah always gravitate to the rebel it is um I do have to say it is very fatigue inducing um it's definitely not a shoe that you're going to do a long easy run in uh, unless you've probably got yeah. like superb biomechanics but um where when we first brought the rebel out we were like yeah it's a five it might be a 5k 10k fast shoe but that's about that's about its sweet spot that's where it sits we've since learned and 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 you kind of um brought up one of the things that's it's really great at it's those quick repeat effort kind of training sessions. So be it, yeah, your, your 1K, one mile kind of repeats, or you might be doing twos or, or 400s at the track. You can do hills in it. Uh, it's a really good circuit shoe at the gym. So if you're doing high intensity stuff like uh, like F45, body fit, hit classes, anything where you need to be repetitively on your feet, go, go, go. It's great for that. Um, and then also a cheeky thing that we've discovered it's really great for is... Um, recovery and when i say that i don't mean recovery runs i mean immediately post a heavy training session or immediately post a running race or a track event or a football game for example um put these on when your feet 
are dead and your legs are sore and you just want to let your feet be because the midsole is so plush. It just gives you that nice comfort underneath. Um, so that's where it kind of works really well too. So I must preface, this is never really going to be someone's primary running shoe. This is always pretty much going to be their secondary running shoe. So it'll be something that um, yeah, compliments. Maybe they do their long stuff in a in a 1080 or an 880, but then have a rebel to do their fast sessions or their gym stuff. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. If you haven't had a chance to to get it on your feet, like as soon as it drops in, yeah, make sure you you go and try it on to see so understand how it fits and feels. But it's definitely unique to the market. There isn't a whole heap out there that's um, yeah doing anything like we're doing with the rebel. So uh, it's definitely the fastest non carbon shoe in our range, which is exciting. Yeah, and it, like I must, I've still got my V ones floating around because like there was a lot less guts in the midsole with the version yeah. ones, and like for me, I do have the occasional nigg niggly Achilles, and a lot of the time it's just fatigue, and when I'm running, I just not running as stiff. So when I want to increase lower extremity stiffness, and um, like instead of doing plyometric work and bits and pieces to improve that i would just run and do some sessions in the v1 because it does encourage you to run stiffer because your body's got to absorb more of that elastic strain energy as opposed to the shoe doing it mm -hmm. and version two still does it as well so i'll use it purely to try and keep my running mechanics a little less terrible and yeah facilitate that stiffness but so i use it as a bit of a kind of rehab shoe for myself as well okay um yeah, but yeah version one definitely more so and that's one thing i did notice about the version one it was super super snug through mm. the midfoot yeah uh, version two was a lot more relaxed a lot more comfortable upper so version three that's even more exciting for me that's got that higher instep yeah it's yeah version one was just wild because like yeah you put that put that on your foot and it like the heel like suction cap to your achilles and yeah you were very very much knew you were in the shoe whereas v2 kind of went more to what we consider like a normal shoe feeling like with a traditional heel counter and a bit yep. more padding v3 is going to continue on that v2 kind of path but enhancing the fit and getting more people into it should be a really good thing so um continuing down the fuel cell path um i had the the new color of the rc elite v2 to show you so um the rc elite is our carbon plated marathon shoe um same midsole density as the rebel but obviously far more of it so you've got a 39 mil heel and a 31 mil forefoot for an eight mil drop so just sitting underneath that uh world athletics uh regulations for elite athletes for road races of 40 mil so um yeah we're obviously utilizing that to the nth degree <laughs> and then you've got the carbon plate which you can see there yep in the middle of the midfoot so that sits at the top of the heel runs down through the midfoot and then is at the bottom of the forefoot so i think it's been kind of studied over uh, studied enough over the last sort of six to 12 months that the relationship between the foam and the carbon is heavily weighted towards the foam being the more beneficial aspect of a carbon plated running shoe the reason for that is that we want this really plush um, responsive uh, reactive foam to kind of pass the pressure to the carbon plate but for the carbon plate to work in its best kind of form you need to land a little bit further back in the shoe. So if we drew the shoe into quarters, you've got sort of the rear quarter back here, you've then got to the midfoot as the second quarter, the third quarter to the middle of the forefoot, and then the fourth quarter being the toes. The ideal spot to strike in the shoe is around here. And then that way, the reason for that is because you're getting a bit more verticality on your strike. So when you're landing midfoot, you're very much underneath your body. Whereas if you're striking heel, you're, you're out in front of your body. With the verticality of it, you're getting more pressure more quickly into the midsole. That's yep. going to help the cushioning react faster. And so when we're landing here, we then start to transition through our gait cycle. And when you get sort of from the third into the fourth quarter of your of your gait cycle, or sorry, your, uh, your foot strike, um, the cushioning is going to basically pass the pressure to the carbon plate, and then the carbon plate will flick you forward. The idea of having the carbon plate in there is help to obviously the the cushioning helps to give that energy return, which is a great sort of marketing buzzword around how these shoes are supposed to function. But I think the most accurate kind of way describing the relationship between the two is it helps with energy conservation. So the idea being yes. that we're going to run in this type of product because we're outlaying less energy than if we were in a non-carbon shoe. 
that then helps you run better with better form. So your biomechanics are more efficient over the length of your race, be it a 5K park run all the way up to a marathon. You're going to recover better post the race because you haven't outlaid as much energy as you normally would. You're also going to sleep better that night because your legs aren't as, aren't as stuffed. Uh, and then the following day, you're going to recover better because you haven't had to outlay uh, as much. So I guess the tough thing with carbon these days is it's, it's sort of said now for elite athletes, if they rock up to a start line and don't have carbon mentally, they've already lost. Like they're not going to compete against the people who are wearing carbon shoes. That's even now filtering down to just Joe Bloggs, who's who's running a marathon because he put it on his bucket list. Like he's now having to turn up to start line in carbon because if he doesn't, yep. then he's not going to run well, um, which is great for us because it means we're selling out of the product really quickly. But it's <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just an interesting kind of side effect of this of these shoes. Everyone Very wants the latest so. and greatest tech, right? Um, the kind of caveat to all of this that I would place is to, if your patient's asking you questions about the benefits of carbon, just make sure you're making them aware not to use it 100% of the time. If you are training in carbon all of the time, your body is going to get is going to get initial benefit from that, but then you'll obviously plateau at a point where the carbon is not going to give you the benefit that it once did. Therefore, when you get to race day, the benefit you would get from carbon is not as uh, as impactful because the body's so used to it. Yeah. The, ben the benefit being like, I kind of, the analogy I use is like, if you went to the gym and did the same bicep curl just over and over again with the same weight, you would have, initially you would, start to see your muscles grow you would get stronger all that kind of thing but to a point you'd it's got to end at some point right so you just end up using that weight as a very kind of easy thing like it'd be so easy for you just to constantly do that bicep curl and if you went into a competition you wouldn't then be able to do a, a stronger weight or a heavier weight because you're so used to that one weight you've been doing so it's a great Definitely. idea yeah, it's a great idea to mix up your training shoes. And that's why I kind of said before, like a 1080 for your long run, Rebel for your short stuff, RC Elite for race day, maybe your long, fast Sunday run. Like keeping your shoes in a rotation helps to not only benefit your body because you're helping make your whole body strong, but you're training different areas of your body too. You're using different leg muscles because you'll be striking in different spots on the ground too. So for foot health and, and lower limb health, it's really beneficial because it helps to train the lower limb as a whole, as opposed to one particular point. Um, I agree completely. In saying that, and and the final shoe that I have to show you is probably the one that I'm I'm most excited about in our range at the moment because uh, no one else really has a shoe like this. Maybe the Adios is this Pro the illegal one? Adidas. Yeah, the illegal one, the Super Comp <laughs> Trainer. Um, I should I should mention before I jump into that a really important point about the RC Elite. Um, so as I mentioned uh, earlier, all our carbon shoes are changing to a family name called Supercomp. Supercomp was a shoe that came out uh, in the late 70s uh, and it was the first running shoe given to our first group of Team NB track and field athletes. So they ran in, in this shoe called the Supercomp. If any of you uh, have a pair of 327s, the Supercomp was the shoe that was half the inspiration for that. So there's some design call outs in the first uh, colorway of the, of the 327. Um, and so, yeah, Supercomp has great meaning to us. So you'll know that if you see the Supercomp name attached to a shoe, you know it has a carbon plate in it. So all our racing spikes and our road racing shoes will be under Supercomp. Yep. The V, the the RC Elite V3, or what is now going to be called the Super Comp Elite V3, was supposed to come out later this year, but has been pushed back to February. But the thing that I wanted you to know is that we are going to do width options. We're going to be the first ever brand to do width options in a carbon plated racing shoe. So excellent, super exciting. I know um, this. Here it is, the Super Comp Trainer. That is a maxi beast. Yeah. So uh, the specs. Same uh, fuel cell density as the RC Elite and the Rebel, but there's two layers of it here and here. The heel here, you can see is as long as my finger pretty much, 47 millimetres in the heel and 39 millimetres in the forefoot. So <laughs> yeah, you're illegal. You're going to get into a yeah. road race with that. Um, yeah, so if you're an elite athlete or considered an elite athlete, you, this is illegal for you to run in. However, uh, if you're running your first marathon or you just run marathons for fun, you absolutely can line up on the start line in this. 
the sweet spot for this shoe is as a recovery shoe. So it's something that you're going to be able to do a long run in and just feel really comfortable the whole time. I imagine that this shoe is going to help people get off the couch who have never run before as well, because yep. it's protective. And the re and the major reason it's protective is not only because of how much cushioning it is, but the way that we utilize the carbon plate. And uh, if you can see in here, the technology is called energy, energy arc. arc. Yeah. So there's a full length carbon plate through this that's cambered. And what that means is the cab carbon plate sits like on this kind of angle, this curvature um, up through the, through the midsole. When you apply pressure to it, so when you land on the ground, the carbon plate will push down through this void in here minutely. But what that means is that as you transition into toe off, the carbon plate will push back to its original form and, and push you forward. So it's really reducing the amount of energy that you have to outlay every time you hit the ground. So with that construction, would it be, it's essentially designed to allow for more or a greater degree of carbon fibre plate deformation for that energy return? Yeah. It also is, yeah, basically going to allow a wider range of people with, with greatly differing biomechanics to be able to get into a carbon plated shoe. To run in a to run in an RC Elite, you need to know how to run. You need to know how to, where you're hitting the ground. You need to know uh, how you're pushing off all that kind of stuff. You can have pretty wobbly biomechanics and not be super aware of where you're landing in a, in a super comp trainer and still be protected. So the shoe is going to forgive you. It's very, uh, <laughs> to borrow a word from, uh, from Nitta, it's very compliant. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, the shoe, yeah, the shoe is different to anything that's out there at the moment. The fits actually really interesting as well because it's quite deep for a carbon shoe so you've got this quite um sheer heel around the back but deep in deep inside here um, i know you can't really see that all that well but deep in here it's got a whole heap of memory foam around the back of the achilles so it locks yep. you in nicely um but then it's got an elasticated knit up the top here which sits really well around the sides of your ankle and your heel and then the midfoot depth if i should turn it this way you can see actually how broad it is through the forefoot particularly in this space here yeah, so it's gonna yeah you're gonna the toes are gonna sit really nicely within it because the main aim here is for the toes to splay naturally as you're toeing off and then you can see with the outsole that's quite broad too particularly through the forefoot so you can see how much space you've got there and allowing the foot to land um kind of almost as it wants on the ground so if you're getting really tired and and i use that word wobbly again if your biomechanics yep. are that you're not hitting the ground in the same spot every single time the shoe's going to be able to forgive you and help you to get moving forward so yeah for an elite athlete that's your 15k recovery run on a monday morning or for uh yeah the person just getting off the couch and wanting to do a, a 10k fun run this is the shoe that they, they would do all their volume in and we're finding that uh yeah people are excited to get into this type of product because we've we've purposely decided to keep the price down on it as well so it retails for the same as the rc elite 320 dollars. so um oh, yeah we're, we're, we could have yeah up that significantly but decided to remain competitive in the space so yeah super comp trainer so it comes in this minty green colorway and then there's a white colorway with um with purple and red highlights and then in september um there is a red colorway coming out that's basically the same color as the rug um uh, behind me so uh, obviously that one will be faster because it's red oh, goes without saying right yeah um but yeah that's that's pretty much all the um all the cool updates that i've got to show you that is amazing it, oh, yeah i'm always super excited <laughs> about everything that new balance is bringing out and just with that super comp the trainer um was that one i think you mentioned a while ago the one that you um one of your athletes was going to go for a recovery run and then they accidentally ran 30 Ks. Yeah. Was it? I've, that I've, yeah. So I've yeah. wheeled this story out a lot lately and it's probably grown some legs on it. And like in terms of it being a bit fabricated, but essentially, <laughs> um, yeah. So Ellie Pashley, so Australian oh, Olympian yeah. ran the Tokyo marathon, uh, last year. Um, yeah. And actually absolutely, uh, incredible person i should say i really have a lot of time for, for ellie um she sample size so i flicked her a pair at the end of last year just because we wanted to get some feedback we were unaware of uh how the shoe was going to perform what it was going to feel like we wanted to yeah really get some understanding from someone who knew what they were talking about so i got her into these and and she received them on a monday morning and she said she flipped me a text and she's like oh matt i've just received the trainer 
I've got a 15K recovery run to do. Um, I'll give you a text in an hour, hour and a half once I'm done. I said, yep, no worries. Um, still being blown away the fact that she did a 15K recovery run in an hour. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, God, five know. hours or so went past and I hadn't heard from her. And so just, yeah, like wanting to know the feedback and, and wanting to be, uh, yeah, to follow up, check she was okay. I just flicked her text, say, hey, you all right? You haven't, I sort of haven't heard anything from you. Um, yeah, what's what's the go? How are the shoes? And she goes, oh, Matt, I'm so sorry. I've been um, lying on my floor for the past hour. Um, the shoes felt great. I accidentally... Um, ran 35k it's just like like mind-blowing firstly how you accidentally run 35k yeah, but then yeah she went into detail explaining about how the shoe was making her feel and how how comfortable it was underfoot it made running so light and easy um so yeah that was just it was just really interesting from her because the thing the funny thing was that she was most annoyed about it, that she'd have to rework the rest of her training for the week because she'd done front-ended it with so many k <laughs> yeah. she needed to lessen off in the back end of the week but yeah she uh yeah accidentally ran 35k when she was supposed to run 15 so there you go. That's, I guess, when you're elite, you can do that kind of stuff like Ellie is. Yeah, definitely. No, I love that. But um, oh, I'm so excited for the whole New Balance range coming out. So my ridiculously large shoe collection is going to get even bigger, I feel. Mm. Um, but thank you again for joining us. I always appreciate our catching up. And hopefully I get to see you soon if we both head into the Gold Coast for the... Yeah dietary conference um yeah firstly thanks for having me i always always enjoy talking with you well, you know that um yeah i'm going to be on the gold coast on what i now know is the second and third of uh, <laughs> september and not the 9th and 10th like i was thinking so i would have been in the convention center on my own wondering where everyone was um but i'm also coming to the adelaide hills event um on the 28th and 29th of october have I got that one Beautiful. right or is that, no, that's right. Cool. I'm pretty yeah. sure you do have that one right. And I'll be yeah. at both, which is cool. amazing. Burgers yeah, so and beers. I'll, I'll have, yeah, I love burgers and beers. So I will be there with my little trestle table talking all good things about New Balance. So yeah, make sure that, uh, yeah, if you're watching this and coming to those events, then you come and say hi to me. Can't wait. And for those that may not be able to get to these events, if there's any sort of podiatrists or health practitioners that are watching this, um, best contact to, uh, best yeah, yeah best best contact is um is email so matt with a double t dot spicer at newbalance.com um i can send you uh basically like a, a tech deck pdf i kind of like to call it of the range i just went through so um yeah i write this pdf that's got a few uh tech details of every shoe all the specs price all that kind of stuff uh and make sure if you want to get into any of our stuff you hit me up as well because we do have a medical purchase program so um yeah eligible as a referring practitioner for footwear to get some 40 percent off discount codes for mb.com.au so um yeah make sure you hit me up for that Awesome. Well, I'll wrap that up for today. Yeah. Again, thank you, Matt. And thanks everyone who's tuning in and watching this and listening to us talk shop. And I can't wait for our next catch up because I think it's going to be even more exciting than what this one was. Yeah. Well, if this product's anything to go by, then yeah, definitely in six or 12 months time, we'll have even more stuff to show you. So exciting times. Maybe. All right. Thanks, Matt. Cool. Thanks, Leisure. See ya. Bye.